Greetings dear listeners. Welcome to our channel. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to our subscribers for your unwavering support. If you're new to our channel, we kindly invite you to subscribe and hit the thumbs up icon to show your appreciation for this video. By doing so, you'll stay updated and notified whenever we release new content. Today, we are delighted to present the lesson 4 for the second quarter of the year 2024. The title of this lesson. Standing for the Truth. Let us pray. Our Father in Heaven. Thank you for this lesson. Please help us understand it. Lord helps us put into practice what we learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our key text is found in John 3 verse 14 to 15. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Dear listeners, The modern Turkish seacoast city of Izmir was once the biblical city of Smyrna, mentioned in the book of Revelation. This ancient city of approximately 100,000 inhabitants flourished in the late 1st and 2nd centuries. It was a prosperous city, and it was fiercely loyal to Rome. Once a year, all the citizens of Smyrna were commanded to burn incense to the Roman gods. Evidently, in the second century, Smyrna had a thriving Christian community, as well, and many were not going to comply. Polycarp, an early church leader, was martyred in Smyrna's public square, burned at the stake for refusing to betray his lord by burning incense to the Roman gods. When asked one last time to disavow Christ, the old man replied, Eighty and six years have I served him, and he has done me no wrong. How can I speak evil of my king who saved me? Throughout the centuries, men and women have been willing to experience martyrdom rather than give up their faith in Christ. Their sacrifice rekindles our courage. The story of their commitment to Christ renews our own commitment. In this lesson we will look at some biblical principles that motivated the Waldenses and later reformers, such as Huss and Jerome, to stay faithful to the Lord no matter what, even at the threat of death from the same power that killed Polycarp, Rome, but now in the papal phase. Sunday Lesson Persecuted yet triumphant The lesson begins by referencing Daniel 7 verse 23 to 25 and Revelation 12 verse 6 to 14, which speak about prophetic time periods and the persecution faced by God's people. It explains that whenever God's people remain faithful, Satan becomes enraged, often leading to persecution. Daniel prophesied about a future time when a powerful entity, symbolized by a little horn, would persecute God's people. John, in Revelation, described a similar period when the church would be forced into the wilderness for protection. This wilderness experience, symbolized by a time, times, and half a time, lasted 1,260 days in Revelation's language, using the day-year principle where each prophetic day represents a literal year. During this period, from 538 to 1798 after Christ, the papal power dominated Europe, leading to the persecution of dissenters. Despite this persecution, God's people found refuge and nourishment in his word, symbolized by the wilderness. The lesson draws parallels with historical events such as the removal of the last opposing barbarian tribe from Rome in the year 538 and Napoleon's actions in 1798 after Christ, which marked the beginning and end of this prophetic period. Despite facing martyrdom, Christians found victory in Christ, overcoming sin through his sacrifice. Their deaths were seen as a temporary rest until the return of Christ, emphasizing the ultimate triumph of God's faithful followers. It is important to remain faithful to God even in times of persecution, trusting in his provision and finding strength in his word. Monday Lesson, Light Vanquishes the Darkness Monday lesson focus on the warnings and promises given to Christians in the face of challenges and persecution. The passage from Jude 3, 4 highlights the warning to contend earnestly for the faith against those who would corrupt it with false teachings and practices. This warning was especially relevant during the Middle Ages when pagan influences infiltrated the church and traditions overshadowed the pure word of God. Despite this, faithful believers, like the Waldenses, stood firm in their belief in Christ as the sole mediator and the Bible as the ultimate authority. Revelation 2 verse 10 offers a promise to those who remain faithful even in the face of death. 
The crown of life is contrasted with the earthly crowns of pagan rituals, symbolizing victory over evil and eternal life for those who endure trials and persecution for Christ's sake. The lesson emphasizes the endurance and hope inspired by the crown of life, as seen in the steadfastness of the Waldenses and other faithful believers throughout history. It encourages readers to find strength and motivation in the promise of eternal life, even during challenging times. Reflecting on what encourages us in difficult circumstances, this lesson prompts us to consider the enduring hope found in Christ and the promise of the crown of life. Do you? Tuesday Lesson, Courage to Stand The Waldenses were one of the first groups to obtain the Bible in their own language. One of the distinguishing characteristics of the Waldenses, and each one of the Reformers, was their absolute allegiance to God, their obedience to the authority of Scripture, and their commitment to the supremacy of Christ not the papacy. Their minds were saturated with New Testament stories of faith and courage. Tuesday Lesson discusses their courage, drawing parallels with biblical principles found in Acts 5 verse 28 to 32, Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12, and Revelation 3 verse 11. It emphasizes the Waldenses' unwavering commitment to God's authority and Scripture, refusing to submit to the traditions of the Roman Church. Like the apostles who declared, we ought to obey God rather than men, the Waldenses stood firm in their faith despite persecution. They embodied Paul's exhortation to be strong in the Lord's power and to hold fast to what they had been given, as advised by Jesus in Revelation. The text also highlights the Waldenses' role in preserving and sharing the scriptures during a time when access to the Bible was restricted. Through hand copying and memorization, they ensured the preservation of God's word, even at the cost of their lives. Their dedication to sharing the truths of Scripture, often at great personal risk, contributed to the spread of God's Word across Europe. Ultimately, the text concludes with a reminder from Proverbs that the path of the just shines brighter and brighter, likening it to the gradual revelation of truth. It acknowledges God's guidance throughout history, raising up individuals committed to His Word to illuminate the darkness of ignorance and oppression. Wednesday Lesson, The Morning Star of the Reformation this lesson explores the foundational role of Scripture in the lives of the Reformers, drawing parallels with the attitudes of King David and the prophet Jeremiah toward God's Word. The Reformers, like David and Jeremiah, rejoiced, delighted, and loved the Word of God. Their deep appreciation for Scripture was a cornerstone of the Reformation, as they found joy and transformation through studying the Scriptures. It wasn't merely a duty or legalistic exercise but a source of delight and spiritual nourishment, empowered by the Holy Spirit. The text highlights John Wycliffe as a prime example of the transformative power of Scripture. His life's work of translating the Bible into English was driven by his personal encounter with Christ through the Word and his desire to share that experience with others. Before Wycliffe, very little of the Bible existed in English. Though he died before Rome got to him, the papacy, undeterred, dug up his remains, burned them, and threw his ashes into a river. But just as those ashes were dispersed by the water, so God's word, the water of life, spread far and wide as a result of his work. Thus God used Wycliffe, the morning star of the Reformation. Drawing from 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 to 3, the lesson emphasizes the Apostle Paul's counsel to Timothy to share the word of God diligently, reflecting the Reformer's passion for spreading the truth they had discovered. Thursday Lesson, Cheered by Hope the Thursday lesson delves into the resilience and courage of the faithful Waldenses, as well as historical figures like John Huss, Jerome, Tyndall, and Latimer, who faced severe persecution in the Middle Ages. Despite facing daunting trials, they found solace and strength in their unwavering faith in God's promises, particularly Christ's assurance of eternal life. Central to their endurance was their belief in Christ's words, Because I live, you will live also, John 14 verse 19 which provided them with hope and courage in the face of persecution and death. They understood that death had been defeated through Christ's resurrection, giving them victory over the fear of death. The lesson draws attention to several Bible passages that provide personal assurances of eternal life to believers. These promises offer comfort and strength during life's trials, reinforcing the unwavering faith of those who faced persecution. The narrative recounts John Huss's unwavering faith during his imprisonment and impending death, highlighting his trust in God's grace and eventual triumph of the true faith. 
Similarly, the Apostle Paul's exhortation in Hebrews 10 verse 23 to hold fast to our hope without wavering resonates with believers today, emphasizing the faithfulness of God's promises throughout history. In this lesson we see the enduring power of faith in God's promises to sustain believers through trials and persecution, providing hope and strength in the face of adversity. Dear Listener God permitted great light to shine upon the minds of these chosen men, revealing to them many of the errors of Rome but they did not receive all the light that was to be given to the world. Through these, his servants, God was leading the people out of the darkness of Romanism, but there were many and great obstacles for them to meet, and he led them on, step by step, as they could bear it. They were not prepared to receive all the light at once. Like the full glory of the noontide sun to those who have long dwelt in darkness, it would, if presented, have caused them to turn away. Therefore, he revealed it to the leaders little by little as it could be received by the people. From century to century, other faithful workers were to follow, to lead the people on still further in the path of reform. As we conclude this lesson, I encourage you to share these lessons to your friends and relatives. May God bless you as you continue to seek understanding and grow in your relationship with Him. Amen.